Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a pastel background for this um, picture from Johanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder. Now before I've started I've put newspaper underneath my page, I've got some paper protecting my facing page and I've got a piece of paper here which will protect the page below and the spine because pastel can be very messy. Now I'm hoping not to make too much of a mess but you never know. So this picture um, I have coloured with this, these are all coloured with the Holbein um, pastel tone set um, and I've done some highlights with some Faber Castell polychromos and the water and the boat are done with the polychromos as well so what i want to do is to have a sort of light blue coloring around the edge to make it look like sky i'm not necessarily going to take it all the way to the outside of the page although the water goes right to the edge um, i purposely haven't colored it right down to the bottom um, i just wanted that that sort of gap and i'm thinking of just doing a sort of aura of blue around so i'm going to experiment i've got my cotton pad i've got my pastels i'm using these um these are mung mungio i think um soft pastels and i've picked a blue color which is this one they're not numbered or anything so i can't tell you now this is quite dirty i'm just going to rub it what i'm going to do is rub it on the onto the pad so I get just a little bit and then rub that onto the page I'm going to see if that works I've been advised or I've read that that is a better way of doing it rather than scraping it onto the page I'm just going to grab another cotton pad to hold the page still that I, I've read somewhere that that is a better way of doing it rather than putting the pastel into a bowl and dipping on it because you get less and I can see that there's a lot less coming off but I'm also coming across a problem where I can't get into all the little gaps with this cotton ball but that is nothing to do with my technique as it were so I'm going to rub some more onto this because that is quite faint I'm going to go around this side with a little bit of it and I might just leave it quite pale I don't even know if you can see I think you can probably see there's a little bit but now we've got all the little nooks and crannies to get into so I'm going to use one of these this is a cosmetic tipped cotton bud so I'll just show you you get a rounded end and a pointy end. So I'm going to rub the pointy end onto the um, pastel. You can't see, it's out of shot. And I've got a little bit on here and I'm going to try and get in these gaps. Just put a little bit in there. Doesn't look like it's enough. Let's do a, a proper scrape. There we go, it's a bit more, isn't it? bit in here oh gosh it's a loud noise it's my boiler it's the problem with working in the kitchen either the boiler or the fridge wants to make a noise okay so I'm going around the edges with this little brush this little cotton bud I mean just to get into the nooks and crannies now I think it's probably so faint that you probably can't see it but I didn't really want a really dark background I didn't want to take from the colours of the um, buildings and things sorry about the shadow it's quite difficult to get the lighting right in here but just going around now you need to be careful when you're using pastels if you've got anything that's really light. My windows in this picture are very light. They're done in a very light grey colour. Just notice there's a chimney there that I haven't coloured in. Um, <laughs> um, so um, you don't want to get pastel on those really light areas. 
so you need to be wary and that's why it's quite good using quite a small thing I'm going to try using the other end I think I can get more more pastel on the other end let's see I'll just get a bit more in there oh that's quite a lot darker that will actually start to show up a bit which is the idea I want to see it a little bit you can see how all the bits of pastel are coming off you may not be able to see hold on maybe if I zoom in and move down We're doing this bit here maybe you can see better now that it's going slightly blue and we've got little bits of pastel everywhere but it's making it it's not very attractive scraping noise is it so I'm going to do this top bit so I'm going to get in there and just in there around here Now I said I just wanted a bit of an aura of blue around the house so I'm going to do all these little fiddly details and then I'm going to see how it looks and decide whether I want to go further out or not. So I'm just checking, can you still see? Yeah. problem with zooming in is I forget where you are. I'm going to get it in there. So here I've had to go over that fence a bit. But I'm quite confident that it won't mess it up too much because um, it's brown. I'm keeping going back to my pastel and applying a bit more onto my um, cotton tip. Now, the thing with pastel is I find it quite difficult to get a really even look and Obviously this is sky, so it can be cloudy, so it's okay if it's not even. I have managed to get quite an even look on some t occasions, and that's when I've really spent a long time rubbing and rubbing and rubbing it into the page. And that's easier to do when you've got a big area and you haven't got to work around something. For example, I'm now no longer in shot, I'm going to zoom back out. Um, for example, when you're pasteling a page and you're doing the whole page and then you're going to pencil over the top or whatever or pen over the top, then you can really go at it really easily with your cotton bud, scraping, you know, pushing it into the page, rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. Whereas with an area like this, when there's all these fiddly bits, I can't, I don't want to rub the pastel too much onto what I've already coloured in. If you've burnished the pencil really hard into the page, then you're more likely to be able to, it will resist the pastel. But it's always a risk, you know, and for me, I don't want to take that risk because I have ruined pictures before. I just thought, oh, I'll just put a dark blue pastel all over the top of the whole page, it'll be fine. And I totally wrecked the page because I hadn't burnished the pencil down hard enough. And uh, things that I coloured in a light colour went blue and it just looked terrible. It's just a disaster. So um, I was quite upset having ruined a page, which is why I'm being careful and sort of letting you know that you need to be careful too. Now into all these little nooks and crannies. Now I'm going to go in around the edges because I think it needs a bit more on the corners and things here. it all together and I'm trying to incorporate some of those bits that are already on the page and rub them in that's better now it's still quite faint at the moment but 
I was on the yellow house so I blew it away because I didn't want to accidentally rub it in. Now be careful here. There we go. Now it's still very very pale at the moment and apart from there now the great thing with pastel is I've got quite a splodge there. I'm going to zoom in for you. Don't worry, I'll pull it down so you can see it. Now here, there's a big splodge. If I get my Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, I can just rub it out a little bit. Just really gently rub over it with the rubber. fades down a bit and the same here oops you can't see here there's a dark bit I can just gently rub it a bit fade it a bit Ooh. right but I'm gonna put a bit more colour down and zoom you back out now some people I know use um, eyeshadow for um, doing backgrounds rather than pastels, which I think is a really interesting idea. It's not something I've tried. My eyeshadows, I did have a look at them, and they're quite thick and oily, and I thought they might stain the page or perhaps even go through, so I decided against using them. Um, and um, But I think if you had a really powdery one, it would probably work really well. I was just a bit worried. I mean, obviously you've got the test pages too at the back of the book, so you can use those to help you um, decide. Where's my, where's, 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 where's it gone? I've lost my, um, I've lost my little cotton buddy stick. Oh, here it is. I'm going to just do a bit in here. looks a little bit pale. I'm just going to add a bit in there. I did do it, but it doesn't want to show up. So now I've done a bit of the outside. It's really pale, and I'm going to keep it this pale now. I'm just going to use this one to fill in the gaps. Let me move that. So where I think there's a bit of a space that needs just a little bit more, I can fill it in, and I can be confident if I go too far, I can use my little eraser to just tidy it up at the end so we're nearly there really apart from there I'm just stroking the pastel with this just to pick up a bit of colour that looks a bit harsh I'm afraid I think because of the way my light is you probably can't really see too much of what I'm doing but hopefully it's just giving you an idea of the sort of thing you can do with this page. Now I love this page, Buildings on the Boat. I think it's so much fun. Whoa! I just put a really big splodge. Now I'm going to try and rub that down with the cotton wool. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to get all the bits off now really gently so that I can carefully look at where I need to. I'm then going to rub down that bit. a little bit that's extra dark and just have a last minute fiddle around with it and there's a bit here that needs a bit more it's just about being I'm just being a bit fussy now just finishing it off I've just made a mess Now the last stage when you're doing pastel is to think about fixative. Now the um there we go. I'm done now. You really I'm sure you can't say very much of what I've done, but believe me there's a very light blue hue on this page. Now last thing is fixing it. Now I know some people use hairspray, but I have heard that it can yellow the page. Now this is colourless, non-yellowing, 
protects charcoal, pencil, pastel crayon chalk drawings and paintings and it's a workable fixative. It, I don't know where it says, um, yes it says it can be used drawing and after the drawing process in work in pro progress to fix layers and prevent smudging and then you can continue with the drawing and a final coat will protect it fully. So it's quite useful because you can put it on and then you can go back and fiddle. You can't rub out what's underneath but you can or well, you can a little bit and add layers on top. So it's quite handy. You don't you don't have to think right this is definitely the final bit. And it means if you do a pastel background, I just zoom out so you can see, whoops. If you do a pastel background first, you can um, spray it and then work over the top. So that's the finished picture. I am going to spray it. I'm not going to spray it here in the house because it's uh, really, really, really smells very bad. And it's a nice sunny day, so I'm going to go out on my balcony and spray it. Now you'll also need to let it dry really well before you um, before you then use the back or another page of the book. So it's another thing to note. So I'm just going to take a photo of this for you and then I will spray it later. I'm going to put a piece of paper between the pages just to protect it for now. And uh, that's me done. So I hope that was useful. I, ha I know I've done pastel um, ones before but I'm not sure I've done one quite like this so I thought it might just be fun and a fun one to show you my little boat from this uh, from this book because it's such a fun um, a fun picture to do so thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed the video and happy coloring <laughs>